Hello guys, this is Dabs Nishmail. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to configure CMS uh, with a local host server that is a WAMP local host server so that you can preview your CMS pages without publishing them to a domain. This is mainly done for testing purposes. So to get started, I need to have WAMP installed. So I already have WAMP installed. The version of the WAMP I'm using is version 3.06. I have that um, the download link in the description of this video so you can go ahead and download that and use that now to get started with WAMP let's just get started with WAMP first I'm going to open my browser I already have WAMP installed so if I go to my browser and type localhost I have this page open but before I continue with that let me go to my system tray I'm going to click on um, let me just right click on WAMP and then go to about so I see the version of WAMP I'm using that is version 3.0.6 that is 32 bit we will take a look at WAMP later. So to get started, let's just go back to our project. Now in my project, I already have some pages created. I have the index page, the admin page, and then the master page. Now the index page and then the admin page is totally blank. And then my master page has some information or some content in here. And I'm going to go to my index page. Since I'm going to be working with the CMS tools, I'll come to my toolbox and then just go to the CMS section of my application. So I'll come to my CMS section. Let me just scroll down a bit. This is the content management system section. I'm going to be working with the tools I have in here. So I'm going to start with the view that is CMS view. Let me just um, put that here, expand this a bit to about this position. This is okay. Let me just go ahead and expand the height of it a bit. I'm going to have my navigation here. So let me just close this up a little bit. Now come back to my toolbox and then I'm going to look for the label. So I'm going to bring up a label here. Let me move down this down a bit. I'm going to have about four labels. The first one is going to be, uh, let me just leave this on name, come to style. And then I'm going to change the size of this. That is the font size of this to about 16 pixels. And then I'm going to change this to bold. I'll go ahead and hit an OK. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit. And then reduce the height of it a bit. So I'm going to reduce the height of it. Now let me double click on this, come back to style. And then I'm going to take away the border. So the border is going to be um, none and then the width is going to be zero pixel. I'll go ahead and come back to my toolbox. I'm going to bring the CMS um, label again. I'm going to position that here. I'm going to double click on this. This time around, I'm going to clear the CMS name. And then what I'm going to have here is going to be um, CMS created date. So I'm going to expand. Uh, let me just double click on this. This is going to be created date and insert it. And then I'll go ahead and hit an OK. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit. Let me move this back here and expand this um, to about this. It's OK. Let me come back to style and then take away the border I have in here. This is going to be none. I'll go ahead and hit an OK. I'm going to copy this and then paste that here. I'm going to change this to created. Um, that is, this is CMS created by. OK, I'm going to change this to created date and then I'm going to um, reduce the size of this and then I'm going to paste one more here which is going to be the uh, number of views so I'm going to change this to number of views I'll insert it so I'll go ahead and hit an OK now you can actually insert more than one um, variables from this um, section for the labels here you can actually bring a comma and exit to the next one or you can go ahead and insert a lot of uh, the variables you have in there. In my case, I just want to have this independently so that I can have control over the arrangement of my labels here. So that's how come I'm doing this independently. So I'll, I'm done with this. I'll go ahead and hit an OK. Let me go ahead and stretch the date a little bit to hit the edge of this. I'm going to move this a bit to the top. I'll come back to my two box this time around. I'm going to bring the navigation or the menu. So I'm going to bring this here. I'll double click on this. First of all, change this. This is going to be at horizontal. This is going to be variable. I'm going to enable SEO friendly links. So this is going to make the links SEO search engine optimization friendly. I'll come to style. Under the background, I'm going to change the background, uh, the background to transparent. I'm not going to have any border here. I'm going to go ahead to change this to zero. Now the size, uh, font size is okay. The color, let me just go ahead and change this to so this particular color. I'll go ahead and then hit an OK now let me move that here and then expand this a bit and then uh, let me just expand this let me come here and change this from horizontal to vertical now I'll go ahead and hit an OK so that's the navigation I want to have here now I'm going to come to the admin page and then I'll come to my toolbox now the admin page all I have to do is to click on the admin tool 
and then expand it here i'll go ahead and then expand this a little bit more so you can see that here now let me just go ahead and expand the height a bit i think this is okay now i have to make sure all these pages are linked or have this master page as its master page so i just right click on an empty space go to page properties and come to miscellaneous and then make sure i have my master page set i already have that done the same thing let me just go ahead and open the admin page and make sure i have that done also so i come here and then that is also done now let me come back to my index page i want to have some kind of label or test here which is going to indicate this as my navigation so i come to my toolbox under the the standard section i'm going to select my heading star um, heading test here i'm just going to double click on this and then i'm going to change this to navigation I'll go ahead and hit on OK. And then let me just move this here and expand this a little bit. I think this is OK. Now what I'm supposed to do next is to do the configuration of my CMS tools I have in here. So to do that, all I'm going to do is to open up my WAMP um, server. So localhost, I'll hit on enter. And then I'm going to hit on that is select my uh, PHP my admin. Now I have this page or my PHP my admin protected with a password. So I have to go ahead and enter the password so that i can be able to log in so i have that done i'm logged in now now what we are going to do first is to create a user account so i'm going to create a user account so i'll go ahead and hit on um, add new user now this username is going to be demo and then the password is going to be let me just make this demo at one two three now i'm going to go ahead to um, create uh, select the privileges for this particular user so i'm going to check all this and then i'm going to uh, check this also now it says create database with same name i don't want to create a database for this user i just want the privileges so i have that done let me just go ahead and confirm the password again so this is going to be demo at one two three and then i'll go ahead and hit on go to create my new user let me just get rid of this now i'm going to come to databases and then i'm going to create a database for demo so i'm going to enter demo here and then i'm going to go ahead to create a database for demo so that database for demo has been created let me just come back to home so that you see that i have a database called demo so if i scroll down here you can see a database name called demo now i'm done with this section i'm just going to minimize this and come back to my application now when i come to the mysql section the server is going to be localhost because i have this server on my local system and then the database name is demo just what we just created now our username is demo as well and then the password is going to be demo at one two three that's the password i created for demo now i'm going to go ahead and hit on ok and then i'm going to come to the admin page i'm going to repeat the process here now where i have admin password now this is the password you are supposed to use to log in into your blog section i'm going to change this to demo i'll probably just change this to yeah this is going to be demo demo is fine and then I'm going to go to allow users. So allow users are users who are going to be allowed to have access to the, ad, um, the admin section of our blog or CMS page. Now the user is going to be admin. And then I'm going to scroll down to this section. Now where I have database name, I'm going to type demo. That's the name I created for my database. And then the password is demo at one, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and type the server uh, name, which is going to be localhost. And then the table prefix, I don't have to do anything to this. Now I'm going to go ahead to change the MySQL username. So this is also demo. And then I think I'm done with this section. Now let me just go ahead and increase the height of our editor here, which is going to be 400. Now when you come to this particular section where we have our editor type, when you click on the drop down up by it, we have a couple of options here. We have test area, we have web editor. Now let's just use web editor for now. We can come back and change it to any of the ones we have there so i think i'm done with this section when you come to this section this is actually the section where you configure it with your email address so in case you want to get alerts on any blog post or comment or anything on your blog or your cms page this is where you probably go about that so you configure this with the right email address as well as this with also a right email address now i'm done with this section i'm going to go ahead to hit on ok now let me just come here um, let me just go ahead and publish this page now we are going to publish this page to a folder called wwb um, cms and our that is our one folder which is the ww folder that's our root folder so to show you that let me just come to explore so you can see that when you come to your local drive c 
there is a folder called WAMP. If you open WAMP, there is a folder called www. Now these are the food. This is the folder that contains all the projects that um, I have on my system. So I just had to create a folder called um, that is www. www um, wwbcms. That is the name of the folder I have in here. So I let me just go ahead and close this. I'm going to go ahead before I publish it. Let me expand this page and clear everything I have inside already. So I'm going to clear this and then I'm going to go ahead to publish this page. So after publishing, I'm going to pull up my browser here and then I'm going to open a new tab. Now I'm going to type localhost and then I'm going to type the name of the project, which is wwb-cms. Now it's going to show me some kind of error. Now this error is just because we don't have anything published onto our CMS page. So all we can do is to just go to the admin page. And when I come to the admin page, it's going to ask me for my username and password. Remember the username is demo. And then the password is also demo at one, two, three. I'm going to go ahead to login. Uh, let me just get this right. I think I typed demo also for the password. That's uh, demo instead, not demo at one, two, three. Now I have my blog page and I'm going to go ahead to create a new page. Now, this is the web editor aspect. So let me just come back to my wizard web builder and just pull some test from here. So using a lorem epsom. So I'm going to just click on this. And let me just draw here, double click on this and then populate this with about nine paragraphs. So I'm going to double click on this, copy this, and then let me just get rid of this. Now come back to my browser and then I'm going to paste that in here. So at the name section, I'm just going to type, uh, this is our first blog post. And then I'm going to come to the bottom. Now, if I'd added, um, that is a section for title, I could have add title here, which is also going to be display. I think in this case, this is all I have to do. Owner, I can just type, um, let's say, Dabson. I, by default, the owner is demo, uh, but I'm going to type Dabson over here. I think I'm done for this section. I'm going to go ahead and hit on save. Now, one thing I have to do is to enable this on the home page. I'm going to go ahead to change this to be enabled on the home page. Now I'm going to come to my home page, and as you can see, we have that here. And if you scroll up a, a bit, you could see that the username created by is Dabson. Under normal circumstance, it should have been demo because I specified the, the username of um, the blog, one who created a blog post. That is why we have Dabson here. Now, if I refresh this page, it's going to indicate the number of views. If I go ahead and refresh this also, it's going to keep on increasing based on the number of views of this page. Now we have that we are done with this section. Let's just go back to our admin page to create one more um, page. So I'm just going to copy this one and then I'm going to change this to second um, blog post. And then uh, let me just um, change this to Ishmael. I'll go ahead and hit on save and I'm going to change the home page from this to this and then I'm going to come back to the CMS page and as you can see we have this here this is our second blog post the name is Ishmael created by Ishmael and we have our navigation here so if I click on this it's going to take me to the first one um, our first blog post let me just uh, okay let's say it's our second blog post this should take me to our first blog post um, let me just make sure I get everything right Okay, I just wanted to be sure if the page was uh, okay because I have this. Let me just take this away and publish this again and make sure everything is right here. So let me just come back here, refresh this page, and then I have that here. The reason why that was given as a problem was because we don't have this on the domain. This is actually on our local host, which doesn't have capabilities of a domain. So that is it. I can switch between my post using my navigation or I have uh, my right hand section here. Now we are done with this section. What we are going to take a look at next is how to be able to preview a page or a project like this on our mobile phone. So on, on our mobile devices. Now to be able to achieve that, we just need a warm server, which we already have installed. And what we are going to do next is just a configuration we are going to do. So I'll come to my system tree. I'll right click. Uh, let me just left click on, sorry, left click on my icon one icon over here i'm going to go to apache and then i'm going to go to httpd v host that's virtual host and then when you come to this section i believe you have something different at this section all you are supposed to do is to enter or type require all granted now this is going to grant access to all that is um 
users on the local host who would know your ip address now next is to know our ip address so to know our ip address you right click on the network icon on your windows system go to open network and sharing center and then you click on the name of your network now when you click on it you just come to details this is going to show you the network um, ip address so this is my ip address that's 192.168.1.107 now all i have to do assuming on a mobile device i'm on a mobile device all i have to do is to make sure i'm connected to this network i saw here so the mobile phone or the mobile device have to be connected to this network and then i open the browser of my mobile device all i have to type is type the ip address of my system that's 192.168.1.107 then i type a forward slash and then i type the name of the project i have that is wwbcms i'll go ahead and hit on enter and then this is going to load on my mobile device so if your project is uh, responsive you can have this uh, previewed on your mobile device and then you may want to do this for testing purposes. So probably you might have designed a website which looks responsive and you may want to be sure if each and every element or everything is working properly or correctly on your mobile device, you can actually use this technique to preview all the projects you've worked on in WYSIWYG Web Builder on your mobile device so that you save the time from having published it onto a domain before you can actually preview your website project. So that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I can say bye for now.